Praise the Lord. My name is Honor Jasonde, a privileged servant in Sanctuary Unit. I have come to return all the glory to the great God of this great commission. Since my school, I have been looking for a place of employment, and every effort was to no avail. During Shiloh, last year Shiloh, there was a place I was working, but not satisfied with the place. So I asked them to give me a time off for Shiloh. They said no, and I told the manager that if he doesn't give me a time, then I'll resign the employment. So I did. And January, 21 days prayer and fasting, God led me, I took a step, I met somebody and the person directed me, and to the glory of God, 16th day of his visitation, the week of our good news, God visited me and they called me and gave me my letter. I have come to return all the glory to the Almighty God. Secondly, secondly the, during the impartation service last Sunday, I woke up with a chap pain at, on my neck. So after the impartation, I touched it, the pain disappeared. But I was having the mind to come and give testimony this Sunday. When I went home, the pain returned again. So I started saying, I'll come and give testimony, I'll come and give testimony. And the pain disappeared. So I'll be talking. Hallelujah. Shall we put our hands together? God gave him a good job and pain disappeared. Heaven on earth. My name is Sesegwe Amaka. I've come to give God all the glory for what he did for me. Last year, end of February, I, come, I came to the church to see Bishop. But when I came, Pastor Tramfat said, Bishop sent him. And I went, when he got to my turn, I told him everything. And he prayed for me. The last word he told me. Th then I was due for delivery. My EDD has passed. The last word he told me, he said I should go and deliver. When I got to the house, my labor started. And 1st of March, I delivered a bouncy baby boy with four points. After then, within four to five months, I found a growth in my private part. Thing just dropped down. I, I was wondering what is this. I went to the hospital for a up And the doctor said, the reason why that thing is there is because of the size of my baby. That the name is called prolapse. That with this prolapse I'm having, I will not be able to take in for my second child. And I should come for major operation after breastfeeding. And he said, if I have faith, that God can heal me. And I told him that I have faith that I will not come for this operation. And during the uh, anointing for total health, the month of March, I believe in God. I told God that, uh, sorry, that December, I was so surprised as I was pregnant. I give God all the glory. During the month of March, uh, uh, total health, anointing for total health, I told God that this month is my month. This month is my month. Hallelujah. After the anointing, the growth disappeared. Shall we put our hands together? Let God be through and all men liars. Heaven on earth. My name is Beatrice Sejan. I want to return the glory to Almighty God that I have done so much in my life. I joined the commission 2013. I came with so many challenges. Now, this year that I, I joined the Wobi, I told myself it's an opportunity for me to be punished, to be polished. So when I joined the commissioner, I start coming to early morning prayer. In the morning, I sat where Bishop sat. I was having loss of memory for 10 years. God restored me. Since then, I've been doing what my man of God is doing. I say, ah, Bishop used to win so many souls. He would go to where they are playing ball. They will pay it to him. I went. When I went there, I talked to them. All of them gave their life to Christ. Today, I have five of them that follow me to church. And second service, many will still come. I am here to return the glory to God. Praise God. Hallelujah. Next Saturday is your opportunity to win souls for Christ. Let's put our hands together for the Lord. Praise the Lord. My name is Adebulu Peter. I've come here to glorify God. I serve at the technical unit. Uh, for the past two years now, this is my daughter. Her name is Precious. She has been having stomach disorder. We've used different kind of medications and um, to no avail. During the last uh, um, mandate, man, the service on Saturday, I wrote all what Bishop said I should write that I don't want in my life. And I wrote the health challenge of my children, my promotion in the office, and every other thing. God has already answered everything. There is no more stagnation. 
Then on Sunday, on Sunday during the mantle, she is at the youth chapel where she administered the mantle on her forehead and her tummy. Immediately she touched the tummy with the mantle. Her stomach started rumbling, 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 and she felt like going to the toilet. And immediately she got to the toilet, she excreted a cockroach. And since then, to today, God has healed us. And it's all, all the glory to God. Hallelujah. If you are next to come up here to share your testimony, lift up your hands and give him thanks and praise. And give him a shout of hallelujah. Let him hear your voice right now. Let him hear your voice of praise. Let him hear your voice of thanksgiving. Worship him. Worship him. Worship him. Give him the glory due to him. Adore him. The King of kings and the Lord of lords. Bless his name. Bless his name. Bless his name. Bless his name. Come on. Let's rejoice in him. He is the God of our salvation. There is none like unto him. Delight yourself in the Lord. Worship his majesty. He will grant to you the desires of your heart. Praise him and praise him. Worship him. Bless his name. Bless his name. Let him hear your voice of thanksgiving and praise. Oh, hallelujah. We praise you, Lord. And we praise you, Lord. In Jesus' wonderful name, we are prayed. In Jesus' name, we have given thanks. This is your day. Yeah. I said, this is your day. Yeah. Last Sunday was somebody else's day, but today is your own day. Yeah. Psalm 106 verse 4. Remember me, O Lord, with the favor that thou bearest unto thy people. There is a favor package for his people. And you are one of them. Are you one of his people? So we will pray according to the scriptures. Visit me with your salvation. Remember me, Lord. This morning shall be a day of remembrance for someone. I want you to pray as if you are the only one before God this morning. The next one minute, lift up your voice and pray desperately. Pray fervently. Pray vigorously. According to that scriptures, Psalm 106, verse 4. Remember me, O Lord. With the favor that thou bearest unto your people. Visit me, O Lord, with your salvation. Visit me with thy salvation. Visit me with your intervention. Let favor speak for me in all areas of my life. Let favor speak for me. Hallelujah. Woo! <laughs> Let your favor speak for me. I believe in the power of favor. Let it speak for me today. Hallelujah. In Jesus wonderful name we are praying before you take your seat lord let every testimony be shared today as i thank you for them lord because i believe in the power of testimony let them be reproduced in my life as your word comes to me they do hear the testimonies four years somebody got a job after waiting for four years deliverance from all oppression of the devil healing restoration of memory speak to god right now father as your word comes let these testimonies be reproduced in my life i believe in them i celebrate you for them i receive my own portion and i thank you for it lord 
Blessed be your name, Lord. In Jesus' precious name, we are praying. I decree that God's word comes to you for your help this morning. As you receive God's word this morning, be empowered in the name of Jesus. The spirit behind every word of God I proclaim this morning, as I stand before him as his anointed vessel privileged to serve, I decree that every word spoken shall impart the spirit of the word upon you. You came in here weak, receive strength right now. You came in here beaten and battered, receive victory right now. You came in here with misfortune. You begin to swim in favor from this season. So shall it be. And if you do believe, say it loud, Amen. Give God a big hand and take your seat. And as you do so, greet your neighbors to your right, to your left, heaven on earth. Wonders without end. Are you greeting somebody next to you? That's my new realm and your new realm. That's my new realm and your new realm. Two more people. That's my new realm and your new realm. That's my new realm and your new realm. A big hand for my Jesus. Come on. Glory to God. The prophetic focus for this month, as earlier declared, is I am for signs and for wonders. Who are you? I say, who are you? What are you? What is your experience? As you have said it, so it shall be. Can I see you say it one more time with a smile on your face? I am for signs and for wonders. Another big hand for Jesus. Today, as a way of expecting God's visitation, As part of our teaching, we'll be focusing on divine favor because it's our divine favor banquet. And it will interest you to know that part of the supernatural life that God wants us to enjoy is favor. I'd like you to get set because this week, favor will pursue you and overtake you. Did you hear what I said? What did I say? Do you believe it? Say it right now. When you are going out and coming in, in the field and in the city, when you lie down and you wake up, from far and near, locally and internationally, from people you know and people you don't know, from the neighborhood and from far places. Amen. Unlocking the supernatural is the series of our teaching every Sunday for the month of May 2015. And we started with the first in the series last Sunday. The second part of it in this service is what we are looking at. What is supernatural? We cannot define it without first of all asking what is natural? A natural life is a normal life. Normal. A natural life is biological life. A natural life is hustly life. Hustly. Whatever exists, hustly. 
is what we call natural. But there is the super of it. Super means higher, superior, above. So the supernatural life is above any kind of life that you can describe as natural. And that is the life that we are expected to live as children of God. We are to live above the natural. The things that happen to them are not expected to happen to us. In the natural, there is danger. But in the supernatural, there is victory. In the natural, there is ups and down. But in the supernatural, there is only up and up. But what will make us enjoy the supernatural life is the understanding or the discovery of ourselves. The understanding of our identity, which includes who am I? You need to know yourself. Where am I from? What is my source? What is my origin? Where am I coming from? As a child of God. What am I worth? What is my worth? What am I loaded with? What stuff am I made of? What am I loaded with? Because the load in you determines your weight. What am I loaded with? In boxing and wrestling, they have different weights. Lightweight, featherweight, and the culminating in heavyweight. And your ranking is determined by your weight. So in the world of the supernatural, our ranking is a function of our weight, which we have to discover. What am I loaded with? There are cars and there are cars. Even within the same brand of a vehicle, you have different system loaded into each car. If you have a Mercedes 500, they are in different grades, even though they are classified to be in the same group. You can buy Mercedes 500 for 10 million and another one for 20 million, depending on what is loaded inside it. The sticker on it is 500 S Mercedes. But when you enter, you see the varieties inside that determine the cost that is placed on each of them. We are all children of God, but we weigh differently. We weigh differently. There are people who will have to pray for two hours before they get resolved. Others will only need to cough. When they cough, Satan knows the meaning of coughing. <coughs> Satan says, this cough is dangerous. He runs away. <laughs> Shout hallelujah. hallelujah. There are those who appear and all the demons are screaming. If you understand what your worth is. Now, it is God's word that shows to us who we are, where we are coming from, and what is our worth. This is why, listen to this, Satan will do everything he can to keep you away from knowledge. The greatest bondage is ignorance. And the best way to freedom is knowledge. Do you want to know who loves you most? The person who shows you the way is your greatest lover. You know who hates you most? The one who doesn't want you to be educated. The best gift you can be offered is the gift of education. The gift of enlightenment. You know the pastor who loves you most? 
it's not the pastor who prays for you it is the pastor who shows you what he has discovered that's why in the ministry of jesus he was always showing to the disciples teaching them enlightening them and as a matter of fact one of the things jesus was being accused of before he was taken to the cross is that he was teaching the people they say what offense did he cause they say he was teaching the people luke 23 verse 5 from verse 4 pilate asked in verse 4 i find no fault in this man i can't understand what you're talking about what did this man do and in verse 5 hear what they say and they were mafia saying he stared up the people teaching throughout all jewelry the enlightenment brings freedom for you shall know the truth and the truth shall set you free i cannot help you better than what i show you from this book i love to pray for you but i want to do something much more important for you i want to show you the truth pray i will bring freedom please follow me there's a difference between freedom i mean there's a difference between deliverance and freedom prayer will bring for you deliverance but it is knowledge that will give to you freedom freedom is a higher position than deliverance deliverance is once but freedom is continuous freedom means allowance allowance the more you know the more allowance you enjoy the more possession you take i like you therefore to be very determined to keep pursuing knowledge and acquiring knowledge keep pursuing knowledge and acquiring knowledge keep pursuing knowledge and acquiring knowledge the secret of strength in the life of bishop Oedipo is acquisition of knowledge according to his testimony one day or sometimes he traveled abroad to america to be very specific and he bought books worth close to ten thousand dollars just bought books he returned home with boxes of books and his wife said hey what did you bring for us he said come 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 and see and then he got to the study the first box books second box books third box books ah, is that all he said that's all that's all according to him he said what is contained in these books can build factory of dresses that i will have bought from my trip and today it is showing when you are loaded with knowledge you enhance your weight in the supernatural the more knowledgeable you are the more weighty you are you drop to the ground and you make impact satan wants to keep you in ignorance in order to keep you in oppression can i repeat that to you satan wants to keep you in ignorance in order to keep you in oppression in bondage show me i'm free now god's word is the spiritual mirror that reveals our actual worth james chapter 1 from verses 22 to 25 god's word is the perfect law of liberty god's word is error free the perfect law if you want to live a perfect life go for the perfect law god's word is the perfect law the perfect law of liberty that is it will take you perfectly into freedom as you look into it glory to god now let me quickly tell you a story here i read of a young man who was in a class in their class there was 
one fellow that used to bully everybody he will intimidate all the classmates shout on them move into the class and everybody is shivering and this young man was having a stare in his mind ah, for how long will this oppression be say with me for how long will this oppression be you see you need to be asking those questions ah, is this how we remain poor is this how i'll be getting sick for how long be stared up in your mind so this young man was stared up how long will this oppression be and one day he finished taking his bath and he was undressed to his chest and he passed by the mirror and suddenly he saw Mozu here he saw Mozu here ha. he checked himself this is Mozu now I think what I have here can deal with that fellow so he got back to the class that day and this bully was coming again when, if, if you don't look for his trouble you will look for your trouble just like Satan keeps looking for your trouble you, you don't have to be a bad man for Satan to attack you in fact as the gooder you are the more he attacks you <laughs> hallelujah so this young man was poised this week I'd like you to be poised for the devil as you are hearing this much I'd like you to be poised this sickness must go so as he was coming the bully was coming and the bully hit him with his soldier and this boy stood and said today is today he gave him the knockdown of his life and all the classmates were clapping hey! <laughs> from that day when he sees this young man coming he just pretend as if he doesn't know he's coming <laughs> and when the young man is not in class and he's trying to intimidate everybody they keep saying he's coming <laughs> shout hallelujah what am i trying to say in scriptures we make discoveries that leads to our recovery in scriptures we make discoveries that leads to our recovery you cannot recover until you discover perhaps you've heard me tell the story of a young man who was sick has lost weight from 80 to 50 kg he traveled all the way to lagos then in kaduna and something told him locate your townspeople so that if you die they can take you home and after that something else told him hey locate a church and he came to church good enough we're having a three-day program the first day second day ah, he was adjusting himself what's happening here i'm hearing something strange after the third day he proclaimed by himself nobody prayed for him he proclaimed satan that is where you i want to kill you now you have been lying to me i caught you today he recovered because he discovered what more about scriptures in scriptures we encounter revelation that results in our elevation there can be no elevation without a revelation galatians 2 2 i went up by revelation without revelation you will go down this church is going up by revelation destinies assume new height with new discoveries paul said god gave him abundance of revelation second corinthians chapter 12 verse 7 abundance of revelation so he was full of power he had abundance of power because he had abundance of revelation He was spiritually fat and buoyant, heavy, immovable. What more about scriptures? In scriptures, we catch pictures that shows.
to us our future. We catch pictures that shows to us our future. You know, the greatest fear in the heart of many is the fear of tomorrow. What will happen tomorrow? There are many people that ran away before the election because they were, not, they were afraid. Some ran away out of the country. Thank God they are back safely. Some ran away to their villages for fear. Ah, what will happen? What will happen? What will happen? But you see, as a believer, you can smile because you can see a tomorrow. How? From the scriptures. From the scriptures. That's why if you don't have scriptures, you are living in a blind world. No one is blinder. If I may use that word, that the man has no scriptures. What are we saying this morning? God's word shows to you what will turn you into a show. What is revealed to you is what reveals you to your world. What God shows to you is what turns you to a show in the world. But for specifics now, who am I? Who am I? What does God what say I am? Number one. By redemption, I have been translated from the kingdom of darkness to the kingdom of light. That is, at new birth, I have experienced an upward change of position. New birth gives you an up trust. New birth takes you up. When you are born again, you are taken up. Now, please listen to this. At creation, this is the position. God, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit, then you next, then Satan on that. But when man fell, the order changed. Man went under Satan. At new birth, when Jesus came, he took man from under and put him back to where he belongs. That's what we call translation. So make translation. I want to hear you again. Colossians chapter 1 verse 13. Who hath delivered us? Serve me, he has delivered us. Not that he will, but he has. You need to discover that. God will not deliver you, has already delivered you from the power of darkness. And if you don't understand what that means, it means that he has translated you into the kingdom of his dear son. There is a kingdom of his son where he rules and dominates. That's where you have been taken to. You are no longer in darkness. You are no longer under Satan's control. You are now in the kingdom of his dear son. You are entitled to enjoy whatever is available in that kingdom. If you go to United uh, uh, Kingdom, you enjoy the things available in United Kingdom. If you go to United States of America, you, you enjoy whatever exists in there. He changed us. If you are in, living in a village, for instance, you have access. Your access is limited to only the things that are there in the village. The amenities that are there is what you are limited to. But when you step into a city, you have other amenities available for you to enjoy. You are no longer in darkness. You are now in light. Where are you now? I want to hear you very well. Are you still in darkness? Shout it, I'm no longer there. Romans 16, 20. He said, shortly, the God of peace will bruise Satan under your feet. Under what? Where is Satan? Where is Satan? Let him hear you. Where is Satan? Harass him, tell him, Satan, you are under my feet. 
Stop making noise. Tell him, stop making noise. You are under my feet. Raise your leg and say, Satan, that's where you belong to. And then like this. Raise it up. Satan, that's where you belong. And what do you do? You bruise him. You bruise him on his head. Hallelujah. All the witches and evils that, that are his children and grandchildren, that's where they belong to. If you kill the father, can the grandchildren be making noise? They are all destroyed. Now, that's who you are. That's who you are. Where are you from? By redemption? I am seated with Christ in heavenly places. So I am from heaven. Far above all principalities and power. Where are you from? From heaven. You are not from the heart. You are not heartly. You are from heaven. You are from heaven. Say me, I'm from heaven. I want to hear you say it again. Say it again. Ephesians chapter 2 verse 6. He changed your position. He made you to be seated together with Christ in the heavenly places. You are only visiting the heart. You are a visitor to the heart. Your citizenship is in heaven. Every day you visit the heart. But your citizen is heaven. That's why he that is seated in heaven shall laugh. You can laugh. You can take charge. You can control everything. Psalm 2 verses 1 to 4. He that is seated in the heavenly places shall laugh. He looks at what they are doing. They are just trying to make some fun. But he laughs because he's seated in heaven. From today, you'll be laughing. I want to hear your amen. What will you be doing from now? Now, let's proceed. Having understood this, we need to quickly come to a point that what it takes for you to to have this authority goes with development, spiritual development, spiritual build up. You need to build up a robust spirit to manifest the supernatural. You need to build up a robust spirit in order to manifest the supernatural. Now, before a car will come to the showroom, it has to go through the factory. Many of us want to make a show without being prepared. Your preparation determines your manifestation. Luke 1 80, verse 80, talking about John the Baptist. And the child grew and waxed strong in spirit and was in the deserts. Doing what? Preparing for what? Till the day of it showing unto Israel. There was a day to make a show, but there were days that preceded the show. You need to build up. You need to build up your spiritual muscles in order to be prepared for manifestation. Manifestation will be preceded by a build-up. Luke chapter 2. Jesus following the same pattern. The same pattern. Verse 40, verse 52. And the child grew and was strong in spirit. He was getting filled with wisdom and the grace of God came upon him for his manifestation. He was strong in the spirit. So there is need for a waxing. You need to wax and verse 52, and Jesus increased in wisdom and sexual and in favor. Can you see that again? This thing doesn't jump on people. You have to prepare yourself for it. He works strong in the spirit. It takes a robust spirit to operate the supernatural. Because man's spirit was degenerated when he fell. Man was like God. But when he fell, his spirit man was degenerated, became corrupted. But after new birth, he needs to rebuild himself. He needs to rebuild himself to take back that position. Potentially, he's been 
change, born again. But he needs to rebuild that nature back to himself. He needs to rebuild it. He needs to feed that nature in him. And now is he expected to do that? Two ways. Number one, he needs to do that through prayer and fasting. I've talked much about the word, so let's assume you've taken that. He needs to build up a robust spirit by the word of God. And then of course by prayer and fasting. There is no spiritual virtue that comes cheap. I had God's servant said again a few days ago that is Bishop Oedipo. He said there is no software for impact in life. You only have hardwares and hard drives. Hardwares and hard drives. You need to drive yourself. Jesus drove himself into the wilderness to pray and fast. As a matter of fact, the Bible says he was with the wild beast in the wilderness. <laughs> but he returned in the power of the Spirit. Luke chapter 4, verse 14. He returned in the power of the Spirit. There must be a going before there will be a return. Many of us want to return without wanting to go. You go for power. You go for power. How? In prayer and fasting. Then you return in the power of the Spirit. You want to return in power? Then go in prayer. Go in fasting. The ultimate purpose for prayer and fasting is to gain spiritual strength, stamina. Psalm 84 verse 7. They go from strength to strength as they appear before the Lord in Zion. Isaiah 58 verses 6 all the way to verse 12. We fast to lose the bands of wickedness, to undo the heavy burdens, to let the oppressed go free, and to break every yoke. And down the line, he said, we will receive the power to destroy the oppositions, to take away the burdens in the lives of men. We don't just go to pray for things. We, go to, we pray to gain command over things. In prayer and fasting, we are building up a spiritual stamina. Lora Banglek Tadu Shigle Gradag Lakten de Glactosize is a desire. We are losing natural or physical weight to gain spiritual weight. In fasting, we are losing physical weight to gain spiritual weight. Satan likes your physical weight because when you are physically heavy, that's why you become spiritually light. And that's the realm where Satan deals with you. Satan is scared when you are getting physically lean, but spiritually fat. He's scared. He's afraid. Because he knows when you are returning, you are returning with spiritual weight that will push him down. So prayer and fasting, non-negotiable. And good enough, this week, from Wednesday to Friday, we'll be waiting on the Lord in the fast. Oh, I thought somebody is excited about that. If you are, you will clap your hands. Amen. Ask your neighbor, what will you do from Wednesday to Friday? Tell him, answer me now. <laughs> what will he or she do? What did he say? What did she say? So tell him, make sure you keep to your words. Not everybody is saying that right now. <laughs> That's what we do. A praying and fasting church is a powerful church. A praying and fasting family is a powerful family. I was sharing with some of our men yesterday 
You see, one of the reasons for crisis in many homes is lack of prayer. I have discovered that when husband and wife pray, they have less or no crisis. Because in their prayer, all the demons hanging around with crisis just disappear. When you are hot, fire, fire in prayer. All the demons say they have started, they have started, clear off, they have started. Where will you have time to pray, frowning your face to your wife, frowning your nose to your husband every day? Good morning. Hmm. <laughs> you are killing yourself. There are couples who have never fasted together once. This, this is one recipe I'm giving to you. There is no, no knowledge, nothing that anybody can write about marriage that will make it work outside of spiritual foundation. Spiritual foundation. If you want to prove what I'm talking about, those of you who have been having strife with your spouse, get back home this afternoon, tell your husband or tell your wife, shall we pray? Especially the husband, tell your wife, shall we pray? As soon as you start praying, you see the heavy weight, the bodies, the strife, the division starts melting. The no greeting results into, I love you. That's the way it works. You know why we have less crisis as a church? Prayer is too much. Prayer is too much. Every time. Satan said, this is a no-go area for us. It's a no-go area. Is somebody getting something this morning? So we develop spiritual muscles in prayer and in fasting. Now, I see that as your portion this morning. As I begin to close, let us understand that it takes living a supernatural life to enjoy favor. When you are in the spirit, favor will follow you. Hear me again. Our world is too wicked for them to want to show you favor. In the natural, nobody likes you. They don't like you. But when you gain spiritual command and you are coming, you'll find everybody loving you. That's what happened to Jesus. Luke 2, 52. The child grew. He was strong. And he was in favor. See, Jesus was so supernaturally loaded that nobody could say no to him. Favor means everybody saying yes to support you. Everybody saying yes to help you. That's the meaning of favor. People who don't like you serving you. That's the meaning of favor. When you live in the realm of favor, you don't have any visible enemy. There may be hidden enemies, but they can't come to you visibly to say, I hate you. Because you are so loaded, the power you carry is overwhelming. Jesus was in command. They didn't like him, but they couldn't help it. Anything he wanted, he got. He wanted to ride on a horse. He got it. He wanted an upper room. He got it. Even in his death, a sepulcher that has never been used by one of the richest men of his time was dedicated for his dead body to be buried. Favor. When you are spiritually loaded, when you gain spiritual command, you swim in favor. Now you see, that's where I live my life. I don't ask who likes me, who does not like me. But everywhere I appear, doors open. The weight I carry compels you to like me. No, I don't have to ask you whether you like me or not. You have no choice. When it is time for me to be blessed, God goes anywhere to locate the next person. You may not like me, but you have to bless me. Why? You have been compelled to do so. How? 
by the empowerment of God. So you need to live in the realm of the supernatural at all times, even to command favor. And that's what we call the hand of God. Joseph was a slave, but he was favored in the house of Potiphar. How? The hand of God was upon him. He would have been killed as a slave, being accused of playing with his Lord's wife, with his master's wife. In those days, a slave is not better than a chair. It's a personal property. You can kill and undo a slave. Nobody will query you. You bought him with your money, just like you bought chair or bed. But the favor of God won't let them touch Joseph. They took him to the prison. Favor followed them there. From today, favor will follow you. I want to be sure you are saying a loud amen to that. Nehemiah chapter 2, verses 5 and 8. Nehemiah went to the king as a cup bearer. You can imagine as a cup bearer. A local steward. Not a prince. Went to the king and said, hey, I need this. I need this. And in verse 8, the king granted me according to the good hand. According to the supernatural hand of my God upon me. When the hand of God is upon you, everybody is compelled to walk in your favor. When the hand of God is upon your business, your career, your submissions, nobody can say no. They can go to sleep with your paper on their desk. The king granted me according to the good hand of my God upon me. It is the supernatural hand of God upon our lives that guarantees our favor. Psalm 44 verse 3. They got not the land by their strength, but they got it by the good hand of God. They got not the land in possession by their own sword. Neither did their own hand save them, but their right, right hand and thy right hand and the light of your conscience, because thou hast a favor loaded upon them. They got it by the hand of God. From today, you will be getting everything by the hand of God. Please hear me very well, though. You have done enough of human connection. Now do God connection. Will it not interest you to know that non-members of this church pay tithe in this church, including Muslims? How? Favor. Favor. People write their checks and send to this church who are not members of this church. So when you are working in favor, you, you live in such supernatural supplies. Most of the blessings I receive is outside of this church. Outside of this church. How? Favor. People just wake up and say, I just woke up. I felt I should send something to you. I said, why not? I'm expecting it. Why not? No human connection. That's why we don't have who we talk to in church about our needs. No. We are enjoying favor from today. The mighty supernatural hand of God will rest upon you to show you favor. Did you say a loud amen to that? Say yet a loud receiving amen. People who don't like you will favor you. People who are planning to kill you will supply you with everything you need to live. Now, the children of Israel had suffered for 430 years. They were permanently regimented slaves. Regimented. But one day, the Lord said, I will give these people favor. So God is the source of favor. I will give these people favor. <laughs> when God says he will give you something, can not, anybody say no? Ah, God said he will give you favor. And you are talking of your MD. That, but will my MD do it? 
Will that director do it? Will that uh, minister do it? God said he will give to you favor. Don't ask questions about any man in charge. God is in charge. Oh, I didn't hear your amen. God said, I will give these people favor. Exodus 3.21 And when they go, they shall not go empty. Favor is the answer to emptiness. And in chapter 12, verse 36, they were told what to do to go to their neighbors as for them. And the Lord who promised in 321 gave the people favor in the sight of the Egyptians. I will give. Then he gave. <laughs> this week, God will give to you. He gave them favor. Where? In the sight of the Egyptians, they are enemies, they are oppressors, they are tax masters. People who hate you this week will turn their face to show you favor. He gave them favor in the sight of the Egyptians to a point that they lent unto them, they gave unto them such things as they required that's what favor is. favor is getting everything you require and to a point that they spoiled the egyptians that is there was some heavy movement heavy movement you could feel that the, the, there was vacuum created within their property and their estate they were moving the things out in bail moving the boxes out moving the gold moving the silver moving moving everything out this week People will move things to your house. <laughs> Listen, in the natural, people labor to be rich. But in the supernatural, people are favored to be blessed. So the riches they labored for will be transferred to you so you can have favor to be blessed. I thought that's what somebody is receiving right now. Give God a big hand, everybody, if you believe God for it. Deuteronomy chapter 8, verse 7. The Lord thy God bringeth thee. You see, you have to understand where favor comes from. It comes from God. The Lord thy God bringeth thee. You, you can't labor for favor. It is by the bringing of God. The Lord thy God bringeth thee. He bringeth thee. You won't labor for it. He bringeth thee into a good land. A land of brooks, of water, of fountains and depth that spring out of valleys and hills. He bringeth thee. Verse 8 down the line, all the way to verse 18. He said, then you shall remember the Lord thy God for it is he that giveth thee power to get. Look at where he's bringing you to. He's bringing you into great, great treasures by favor. What they have labored to get as riches, they will give to you by favor as blessing. Psalm 5, verse 12. The Lord will bless the righteous. With favor will he compass him as a shield. And who is the righteous? The righteous is one who is forgiven. Second Corinthians chapter 5, verse 21. If you read from verse 17. He made him to be for us sin so we can enjoy his righteousness. You have to be in Christ to become a new creature, to enjoy the blessing of God. Giving your life to Jesus is what made you righteous before God. Wherever you are seated this morning, I know that the Spirit of God is already talking to someone here for salvation this morning. You know you are not born again. You know you have not given your life to Jesus Christ as Lord and Savior. I have prayed for you before coming to the church this morning that God will touch you. People seated around you are already praying for you right now. That God will touch you. He will make you see. He will make you believe. Wherever you are seated, you know you have not given your life to Jesus as your Lord and your Savior. You are not born again. And you want to be born again this morning. You want Jesus to become your Lord and your Savior. Will you allow me to pray for you right now? I'm very eager to do that. And I know you are very eager to receive that prayer. Wherever you are, stand to your feet. Quick, I want to be born again. I want to give my life to Jesus. God bless you. God bless you. God bless you. Stand up quickly. Stand up quickly. 
I know you are very sincere this morning. I know you will not be an hypocrite this morning. I know you want Jesus as your Lord and Savior. Perhaps you are here this morning. You are feeling guilty. Oh, will God save me? I'm a bad sinner. That's why he brought you. For the fact that he allowed you to come to church this morning is an indication that he wants to help you. Wherever you are seated, an addict, oppressed, things are not working the way they should work in your life, and Jesus is saying to you now, come to me, I will help you. I want you to take a bold step. Start coming to the altar. Some other person is here. You once got born again, but you turned your back on Jesus. You felt disappointed. You felt Jesus didn't do you good. And you have decided to turn back. You can return home this morning. Jesus will make everything good for you. Whatever you are, stand to your feet and start coming. Carry your Bible. Whatever I came to church with, if you came with any, come quickly. Church, won't you get excited? As you see Jesus saving souls this morning, come quickly. Come. Come. The door is open. The hands of Jesus are open to receive you this morning. Come. 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 Now. I hear God say to me to tell certain individuals who are still seated. The Spirit of God is speaking to you directly right now. He said, for how long will I wait for you? I can hear the Spirit of God saying that to someone who is still seated, trying to imagine, should I go or not? The Spirit of God is saying to you, I've called you several times, but you refuse to obey me. I've called you several times, but you refuse to respond. The Spirit of God is saying that to someone here this morning. Why don't you come home right now? Why will you remain in suffering? Why will you remain in oppression? Why will you remain in your heaviness? Why will you let Satan oppress you some more? If you are that person, and now you know that's what the Spirit of God is saying to you, stand up quickly. I release you by the power of God. I command every devil holding you down to lose his hold from you right now. I'm waiting for those three people who are in that category. If you are one of them, stand up right now. Stand up, stand up, stand up, stand up. Quickly, run down here. Run down, run down. I release you now by the power of Jesus. Church, let's give Jesus a big hand for them as we pray. God bless you. More people are still standing up. Can you see what Jesus is doing? Somebody is saying, I don't want to be left behind. Can you see more people are standing up? Can you see what God is doing this morning? God is too determined that no soul will be lost this morning. God is too determined. Oh my God, my God, we must thank you this morning. We must praise you for saving more souls this morning. We must thank you. We must thank you. Now, I'm about to pray, but the Spirit of God still tells me there are a few individuals here this morning who are one leg in, one leg out. Still doing some old stuff. Coming to church looking good, looking righteous, but back up here, some things are happening in your life and you don't like it and you want to change. You want to change. I don't know who you are, but the Spirit of God tells me not to pray yet, but to give you a chance. I don't know whether it's one or two, three people. If you are in that category, stand up, stand up. God will receive you, He will show you mercy right now. Come quickly, come quickly. God bless you. Come quickly, come quickly. God bless you. Come quickly. This is your hour. This is your time. This is your hour. Come plainly before God. This is your hour. This is your time. This is your hour. This is your time. This is your hour. This is your time. Tenderly, Jesus is calling. Come home. Come home. Come home. Come home. Come home. Right now. Come. 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 What a day. What a blessing. Your joy has arrived. Your peace has come. 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 Young men. Young women. Come. 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 You think you are bad? Jesus is saying, come. I will show you mercy. I will receive you. Thank you, Lord. 
Now, all of you in front, lift up your right hand. Close your eyes in prayer for concentration. Lift up your right hand and say with me, Lord.